हाउजिल्लाजीम बिस्मिल्लाम अल्लाम जी आया नू पखैर आगले निहाओ चुनशुमे वश बले ओहाय गुजाइमस गुठ मोगन ओला भोजोर प्रिवियत कई पहाल हाल शुम चतोरे आहलन वसार महबा बूना मूचो ग्रासी असवाबी अब भली कर आया होश गैल दिन अनाय वसार खुयो मोर आदाब थैंक यू वेरी मच एवरीबॉडी फॉर ट्यूनिंग इन टू पीटीवी वर्ल्ड यू सर्टेनली वाचिंग वर्ल्ड दिस मॉर्निंग लॉन्ग साइड में वेरी वेल लर्नर कलीग हु हैपेंस टू बी मिस हाजा सती आई हैपेंस टू बी शुजाद हसन खान एंड फर्स्ट थिंग्स फर्स्ट हेलो हाजा हाउ आर यू डूइंग टुडे अस्सलाम वालेकुम थैंक यू सो मच फॉर इंट्रोड्यूसिंग मी शुजाद सो आई कैन सी दैट यू हैवंट रिक्यूपरेटेड विद योर दिस सोर थ्रोट एंड आई फाइंड दैट देयर लॉट ऑफ पीपल हु आर गेटिंग इंफेक्टेड विद दिस डिजीज डिस्पाइट द फैक्ट दैट इट हैज रेन एंड ड्राई सीजन ड्राई विंटर्स हैज एंडेड बट आई डू फील विद द पासिंग इयर्स दिस इन्फ्लुएंजा इज गेटिंग वेरी स्ट्रांगर इट्स गेटिंग इट्स म्यूटेटिंग एंड आल्सो इट्स एडजस्टिंग टू द रियलिटी सो previously we used to get infected and uh, get better in 2 3 days but now mm. its span has increased from 2 3 days towards 10 days but having said so it's a monday morning and uh, i was having this conversation with my sister yesterday because she is having exams nowadays okay. and uh, i said the thank god that i have passed that time and i have done my masters because um it's not because of the fact that uh, i find the academic studies a very gruesome process or i find it very burdensome it's because of the fact that nowadays our attention span has really shrunk and that has impacted our concentration level so having said that i could see my sister studying and i could see that after one lecture she would open her social media and she would scroll um through all of those videos just for one and two hours and that she would just waste her time and uh, i can empathize with that because i'm also doing the same and i do find that we somehow need to repair our concentration level our attention span and the best way is to i think refrain away from the social media for a considerable amount of the time and be very mindful about how you consume social media because when we talk about the evolution i do remember especially in the social media when it started uh, the blogging was more of a written expression True. but now with the instagram with the snapchat it's more of a pictorial representation and and uh, you know haja in addition to that i think i would want to kind of reflect upon where you right. said that you know that your sister was having exams so imagine that some day you know one fine day somebody asked me whether you would you want to go back in time and i was like yeah you know what if i still have to appear in my examination i think i certainly am a very happy guy as of now you know i don't want to do that but where you spoke about and i think uh, all of us have been through that as well you know where you all of a sudden you know so i'm preparing for my morning show all of a sudden there's another text and you receive a link in your whatsapp you open it up and then you continue to do so right. but having said that i think that all of this weather and you know where you said that you know that uh, the virus is mutating i think that our immunity is going down you True. know the virus is mutating as well but our immunity is that's going it. down too as well and you know that's exactly what happened to me early in the morning today and i was was like yeah why am i even feeling this way True. uh you know because we just kind of came over or came out of a time where we were all ill say coughing and what not and then alhamdulillah i trained but uh, i think uh, you just have to pick yourself up every single day and be like hey you know what whatever life gives you <laughs> may it be lemons may it be oranges just make some juice have it and show up at work so i think coming back to the point yes obviously i think what you wanted to say was that it has had a major impact on the way we are now the way we behave the way we sure. want to be in front of people and i think having while we are talking about it we really need to kind of be more focused about kids too because imagine that you know all of those kids who are in front of ipads you know who are on the phones true. imagine their first language is not even urdu you That's know their true. first language is english, english. or the or whatever uh, language they're listening to ladies and gentlemen so we really need to talk about it but before we do that we actually have to take you around the globe whether what's happening in on the globe in this true. planet uh, we call earth so for the top stories hajra what do we have first up so yes prime minister shahbaz sharif has arrived in geneva to co-host the international conference on resilient pakistan along with united nations secretary general a high level delegation comprising federal ministers bilawal bhutto zardari isaak dar shahri rahman and maryam aurangzeb is also accompanying the prime minister a series of tweets prime minister said we will present the case of flood victims before the world he said we will also now throw light on the steps taken by the government for the relief and the rehabilitation of flood affected people so while we were talking about the shrink uh, attention spans and the concentration levels have dipped down 
I think it's extremely important that we keep this climate change narrative on the clock, on the discourse, because obviously the floods have now receded, but uh, the attention of the world should not recede back on this very pertinent and important issue because next year we can face the same issue. True. So it's not that the world should need to, uh, world attention should need to be away from this climate change discourse. And I think that's very important that our top leadership is there in Geneva and conveying their messages, conveying their voices to the international community of what, what needs to be done. And obviously words, um, before we are talking about it, I think we need to translate our words into action, which is very important in Pakistan's context. Exactly. Context. And you know, when we actually speak about translating our words into actions, I think over here in Pakistan, when we speak about, you know, technology, I think we are right. doing that. Uh, we are making sure that, you know, our actions are going to speak louder than word as well, because Pakistan's largest three day tech conference and expo titled Future Fest 2023 concluded at Expo Center in Lahore. Entrepreneurs, decision makers, policy makers, investors and innovators are also the part of the tech conference who highlighted the various aspects of information technology as well as its role in securing the future. More than 50 MOUs have been signed at Future Fest 2023 between various e-commerce IT companies and software houses. Six Saudi-based companies were also the signatories. Wow, I mean, that's the way forward. But I would certainly want to see something more than MOUs as well. I mean, uh, right. all my life I've been reading about MOUs, but what we certainly want is, you know, that those things taking place in actual reality, you know, so that Pakistan actually progresses towards where we want to head. Because having said that, while we were an agriculture-based economy or an agrarian economy, ladies and gentlemen, on number two now, we have the IT exports as well, which kind of gets or fetches $2.5 billion for Pakistan annually. So that's the way forward. So, Shazad, certainly Pakistan is an agrarian economy, but we have far surpassed that and now the IT services or the services industry is leading the economy. True. So, moving on to our third news item, which is uh, it's 9th of January and we are observing the death anniversary of a famous Punjabi film hero, Sultan Rahi. He was born in a Muslim family in Uttar Pradesh in India in 1938. His family migrated to Pakistan after partition and settled in Gujranwala after 1947. He began his film career in 1959 as a guest actor in film Baghi. Mola Jat was released on 11 February 1979, which became his most successful Pakistani film. The actor remained most popular Punjabi hero during 70s and 80s, and he appeared more than 700 Punjabi and Urdu language films and named wow. in the Guinness Book of uh, Record as the most prolific actor. And having said so, when we talk about Mola Jat Shahzad, certainly we can see that it's a new version is also here in the industry and um, considering the fact that there is a global inflation i was reading a very interesting article about how um, we need to do more to sustain our pakistani cinemas because things are looking very grim and mola jad obviously it's very successful it has earned more than 100 uh, crores, crores um, yeah. yes which is which is a landmark Quite of a pakistani film um, <laughs> having said so it cannot sustain pakistani cinema of course we need to do more to make sure that our industry True. entertainment industry is on the track and and it so went beyond border as well. Imagine that, you know, it was released in India too. But having said that, you know, I would want to come back to where, how, you know, Sultan Rai Saab was the very epitome of being a mard. <laughs> oh, maala inu, maala na maala, the maala ni mard. Yeah. And gandasa and everything. Characters. And I think back in those days, you know, our men over here within our own society were very influenced and inspired by uh, uh, Sultan Rai Saab. Or the character Sultan Rai Saab did play, you know, so may it be... Mola Jat or maybe any other, imagine that, you know, 700 or more films. So, you know, our men back then really used to do that. Oh, Chaudhary, Piche, oh, yeah, you know, th things like that. I think yeah. that was a part of our culture. And it was all because that they have drawn inspiration from True. such amazing heroes who were out there, even though that there were people like Muhammad Ali Saab as well, you know, some great chocolate heroes Pakistan has seen. Some people would wear Rain those bell-bottom yes. pants yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, would all behave like Muhammad Ali Saab or Wahid Murad Saab. And then there would be this class of people Oh, <laughs> so I think even in Punjab now we do have this culture. Oh, Chaudhary, you know. So, so I don't know, but I think that that era was very beautiful. The way people have depicted their life stories and you know the way we have mm -hmm. seen films. I think they were great. It was all about family entertainment and even now and, when we speak about Mola Jat, it was a family true. entertainment too. And mostly when we speak about the films, they were centered around a system, a, a, a very corrupt system and the protagonist is fighting that system and still today we remember those stories, we remember those songs because they were fighting usually social ills and norms and certainly materialism, consumerism has crept into today's society, in today's world. So uh, the stories that are now being produced are not as impactful or powerful as they were produced back then. So having talking about the emotional 
spaces and how it is very much important to have a right sort of outlet where you can have a catharsis and especially for the children because obviously Shazad, you're a father to three wonderful oh, girls, yeah. Alhamdulillah, Mashallah. And we, you can understand that kids have this, you know, cranky sort of a phase where parents do not understand how to handle them. Um, and also it's important to give the safe emotional space True. where they can True. emoticote their actions, right? Um, so to talk about the psychological well-being of our kids, how to deal with them, we have a wonderful guest in our studio who is going to tell us what parenting methods should we adopt because there is no one fits uh, one size fits solution True. right to that so we're very glad that we have been joined by dr aiza abed she happens to be a clinical psychologist assalamu alaikum and thank you so much for coming to our show wa alaikum salam and it's uh, great to be here wonderful new set thank, thank you, you so, so much. much you know it gives us a lot of uh, energy Lighting. you know when yeah. we come on to this set as yes. well we're glad alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. and uh, thanks to our entire team who've actually put yes. in a lot of effort but since you are here we're going to take advantage of this opportunity Obviously, when we speak about children, you know, as parents, we are always very concerned, sometimes mm -hmm. over-concerned as well, sometimes we yes. over-pamper them. Yes. First of all, uh, mm -hmm. what I would like to know is, what is a happy childhood? You know, because I've been beaten by my mom, uh, <laughs> I think, almost every single day, because I was very naughty and I would do stuff which she didn't like at all. But I'm glad that I was being beaten because otherwise, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would still have been naughty. <laughs> so, and I think that I've had a very happy childhood because mm -hmm. of the fact that, you know, I would go to my grandfather's place, mm -hmm. it was a joint family system. My chachus would spoil me, my chachis would tell me stories, you know, things like that. So I believe that I've had a very happy childhood. What in your sense, as a doctor and, and a clinical psychologist, what are you going to say, what is a happy childhood? Well, a part of what you said is, of course, in included. Uh, first are the physical needs, okay. the nourishment, the feeding, the, uh, you know, the keeping warm, clothing, giving baths, you know, all that physical regime that is very important. Uh, the most important thing which we are now becoming more and more aware of is the emotional uh, are the emotional needs of the child as the child grows we acknowledge the child as an individual with in his own likes or dislikes okay. rather than considering him or her as a photocopy of our own desires and mm. imprinting our own uh, th things on him you should do this you should be like this no this is not to be done so a happy childhood consists of a uh, time where from uh, before being born in fact to uh, uh, your teenage or whatever the child is accepted as an individual True. given space for his or her I uh, ideas and needs and likings not judged validated and most particularly he is appreciated for whatever he is and then the adults in his life Yep. They are able to communicate with him, they are able to True. teach him or model appropriate behavior as adults so the child learns how to deal with the world rather than putting their troubles in front of him, oh you know I, I have a tough, so the most unfortunate part of parenting in Pakistan which I have seen is you, I, I do so much for you, you are so ungrateful, you are telling this to a 10 year old child. True. True. Uh, you should do better because your cousins are doing well. True. Comparisons. Very comparisons. Um, then we have this mindset, we are very okay with loud noises, insulting, True. derogatory uh, uh, you know, behavior. Yes. And most unfortunate of all, you have kids and now you put, give them a nanny, a maid who is hardly a child herself. True. And you give them a screen and you are busy chatting with your friends. That's very true. true. That's the most unfortunate. That's the what, what everyone is doing now. And this is obviously what we were talking about, our shrink attention span and concentration level. So talking about, because Dr. Saiba also deals with kids who are differently able and we want to have this debate and narrative around diversity and inclusivity. So Dr. Saiba, we see that the, when we talk about kids who are school going kids and we see that the mm -hmm. reading is a very essential culture yes. of our classrooms, of our schooling community. Mm -hmm. and people or especially kids who are dyslexic, who have difficulties with learning, um, they might not find that very empowering notion of the reading because obviously they have a difficulty communicating out there. So how do we make sure that we provide them an emotionally sound environment in the class and that does not feel suffocating for them, rather it should be an empowering notion for them? Well, uh, we are a hugely populous country. True. And if I were to say you should not have more than 21 children in a class, <laughs> I think I'm asking for the moon. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the main goal is that when, you know, from uh, pre-nursery and early education levels, right. the class has to be very small. True. True. So the teacher can attend or she has a helper, so they are attentive to the child's needs. True. Now when you are not attending to the child's needs, the True. child is getting the message, I am not being heard, I am not important, what must I do to get heard? Yeah. Uh, now, uh, in, uh, let me point out for your, uh, 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 you know, when you said for reading and the shrinking uh, attention span, actually what has happened from our times, mm -hmm. we used to have long articles, you know, for example, True. Reader's Digest. <laughs> True. There That's used to be very good lengthy articles. If you pick up a Reader's Digest today, it's very short. True. You know, every article ends, it's a very thin volume. That's true. Secondly, YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, everything, true. they have reels. And reels are? <laughs> Seven seconds, ten seconds. True. Not more than one minute, yeah. I guess. No, and, and, a minute and that's is what we long. like to watch these days true. as well. And that's what we are all doing. True. So you see, we are not staying focused. As true. adults, we are not staying focused. The children are on to it also. So if you expect them to stay focused on long things, you know what you have to do? May give them to, uh, something which they should read for a longer period of time, well, exercises. Uh, exactly. Read. But when they are very young, we play games with them or yeah. we, okay. you know, we play chess, we play Ludo, okay. we play uh, Monopoly, uh, Monopoly Jigsaw Scrabble, Puzzle, yeah. you know, we have to and then slowly, you know, children nowadays, I say, what hobbies do you have? And they're like, what is the word hobby? And I say, sorry, I <laughs> need to. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have uh, activity you enjoy doing, right. it can be anything like, right. well, I would say sewing or something. Yeah. So basically, it's an eye hand coordination, right. maybe clay. Hmm. Maybe yeah. candle making, anything, anything. Drawing, art, paints. Anything. So it's the eye hand coordination which we need to develop. Wow. Okay. And that builds the focus and that builds, okay, I've started this, for instance, this pattern here. Mm -hmm. So when if you draw or color it, it will right. take you a good co part of an hour or so. True. Okay. So what am I doing then? I'm concentrating. I'm right. not thinking of anything else. And when I'm concentrating, I'm developing methods to calm down. Okay to self-soothe, to relax. Yeah. And I like that part where Shazad said in the beginning, oh, it was terrible, but I, we get up and go. And you know why you get up and go every time? I think I have to pay my daughter's fee. <laughs> <laughs> I was if I don't go, I cannot manage the bills. <laughs> I think people who are able to get up and go is because they learned from their childhood. Hmm. Yeah. It's how to deal with it, exactly. they have a good bank of emotional strength, right. good memories, good support, a good routine in place. Yeah. Right. So no matter what happens, it is your routine which sustains you. Okay. You don't want to get off of work, right. but there's something which you, which you, you, you can't put a finger on it, but right. it will get you up every morning. And it's always that discipline which actually pushes you or any individual yes. who's out there as well. But having said that, you know, since we were talking about, you know, their emotional requirements, kids, Right. Now, I have a challenge at, at my place. Now, my challenge is, and you know, I, I believe that you know, there might be a lot of parents out there who might go through the same. Mm -hmm. So, imagine one of my daughter, Alhamdulillah, is three and a half years old. The other one is a two and a half. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is that, you know, I'm literally good friends with the one who's at three and a half. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so she sleeps with me. She's going to play with me. She's comfortable around me, anything. And Wonderful. then she wants me to be her horsey mm -hmm. almost uh, every single day. So, I have to be that horse. Now what happens is that as soon as she's going to walk in, the two and a half is going to walk in as well. Now very quickly if I'm going to hug the three and a half, you know, the two and a half is out there staring at me. And then I have to pick both of them up, you know, some, somehow manage it that, you know, mm -hmm. she does not feel left or alone or, you know, True. left out or things like that. But it really takes a toll when I see that the other one is getting disturbed just because I am playing with the other one. Mm -hmm. You know, not that, that I'm not going to play with her, but obviously, you know, for me, men cannot multitask, right? So what happens is that, you know, if once I'm going to get done playing with her, I will move on to her. And then as soon as I move on to her, she's going to come back and she'll be like, you know what, you still need to play with me. So how as a father do you think I can strike that balance where both of them feel that they've been loved equally? So there's a word for it? Favoritism. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is, there is. I'm going to admit that. Yes, you must admit yeah. that. And, uh, you know, we, uh, our religion endorses us to be equal in treatment to true. all our children. True. Right? That's true. But we have uh, certain feelings, more feelings for one. Because we connect with that one child who somehow, you know, there's, there's that. It's comfortable the way we are. Yes. She's <laughs> just accepting us. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. Uh, but nevertheless, 
uh, rather than making the ch children feel that, and I've seen this favoritism in parents, in you know, families, grandparents, they highlight one child True. and the rest are like, why aren't we loved? Why aren't we important? True. Okay. True. We see this particularly in schools with teachers. It's hurtful, it's damaging, mm -hmm. True. it destroys the personality. But, but then how can we motivate the kids to do better? For example, if a, if a person is uh, getting the top grades, right? Obviously, he's going to be more favored of the mm -hmm. teacher because he or she uh, has good grades. But mm -hmm. how to instill that inspiration so that other kids do well too? And before okay. you answer, I before you answer, there's question. one more thing which I would <laughs> want to add away. So imagine that, you know, now my daughter, Alhamdulillah, she's going to go in the fourth grade. Okay, mashallah. So I've told her every single time that, Putta, you know, what I've seen in my life is get whatever grades you want to get. Just never be stressed about grades or pressure or anything. Do whatever. Just study. If you think that you're satisfied with what you've done, mm -hmm. I think I'm just happy. You know, even right. if you have to, God forbid, repeat the same grade, I won't mind that. But you really need to put in that amount of effort yeah. which is required of you to do so as a kid. And I think ever since then, man, she's just been a happy lady. You know, and she's uh, scoring it's good grades. She's okay, fine. Happy. She's like, there's no pressure from my mom and dad. Nothing from the school. And, sh and she loves to go to school. So imagine every day she wakes up, She's so uh, excited to go to school that I'm like, hey, you know what? Why wasn't I this excited when I was going to school? Please. So, so the thing is, Shahzad, that when you are dealing uh, with your children, and you need to give them equal, show them, I, uh, the, despite your soft spot for one, it will come out, the kids will understand. But yeah. nevertheless, you need to have that exactly. love for each child. Exactly. That's why, that's why I said that, you know, then I have to pick up both. Then, you yes. know what, so what happens is that even if I'm a horsey, so I'm going to tell my wife, you know, put the other child on my back as well. Mm -hmm. And then they start to pull each other. Ah, <laughs> that's my horsey. That's my because you see, the, uh, the theme for competition has, for your time and True. affection has been set. True. So now you have to break that cycle. How do I do that? Equal treatment. Okay. One child here, one child mm -hmm. here. Okay. It gets difficult and one of them is heavier too <laughs> Alhamdulillah so I'm like okay I still try to manage. And then let me tell you uh, they will have separate likes different likes True. so you develop a bond with them with their likes. With their likes yes. So, so it, they don't have to compete for, for the horsey or whatever true, true, true. so with the younger one what does she like? I think what, what she likes is to have food most of the time Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> she, she does not like to be tickled and then she's not a very screen type of person but the only thing she's, she would like is just to be in my room, just around me, playing with my stuff, and I won't really mind that. Yes. But then at times, you know, my team members are here, so I cannot let them be in my room. There are other people out there in my rooms as well. We're working. So then that's something which actually becomes a problem. So, but basically what I'm saying is that with each child, yeah. each child has their own temperament True. and likings and their connection with you. True. On the basis of that, <laughs> You work with them and develop your unique bond. For exactly. instance, you can, like, she's still young, but you can take her out individually for True. some time. It's our time together. So what I did just uh, last time was just because now the schools are opening up, so right. now the ones who actually go to school will sleep early. Okay. So then, you know, what I did was oh, I lovely. actually picked her up, went right. down, you know, had, sat down, had dinner with her, okay. you know, uh, right. set her up, you know, everything. And then she was really very happy. She exactly. was like, okay, daddy, I think it's about time I go to sleep. I was like, okay, I'm going to put you to bed. So she was happy. And read a book. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that too. <laughs> Book reading <laughs> is very important bonding, for yeah. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. And for teachers, you know, it's very unfortunate because we have this social thing of uh, praising for good deeds, expecting others will follow, which I said earlier on, you know, we say, why don't you just like sort, uh, like you know, we have this phrase in Urdu, khurbuza, khurbuza ko <laughs> <laughs> <ke> <laughs> but it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. Human beings are reactive. So yeah. they'll say, why should I? And they'll get irritated or jealous. So basically, Teachers need to be uh, genuine with all of them True. and appreciate every individual for their uh, worth. And that's how we can overcome favoritism. Okay, wow. so when we talk about obviously nowadays I find that the reading culture is in really decline because I don't see a lot of people reading out there. And especially the younger kids that are coming up, I don't see a very vibrant book reading culture there. Uh, so talking about kids who have disabilities, who have learning disabilities, mm. I mean, how can we make sure, and, and if they are not attended to properly, obviously they develop very fractured mm -hmm. academic identities. How to make sure that we foster an accessible education in that sense? Because obviously teachers are overburdened. Like you mentioned, there are 40 kids in a class. Uh, very few schools, elite schools might not have that sort of a strength, but usually in the government schools, which are more accessible to the rural and urban kids out there, uh, it's very overburdened mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And I think teachers are the first focal point in identifying if the kid is suffering from something uh, or from some learning dis disability. 
I'm seeing some very good changes in Pakistan, okay. but they're slow. Right. Uh, inclusive education is now making True. headway. True. It's, it's been, we are already signatory to World Child Rights. I think uh, we need to give credit to you and your team because you were the one who approved that True. bill, the dyslexia bill. Part of it, so, uh, sort of. And, and uh, uh, now we are sort of like expanding on the theme. Right. The good change that I'm seeing is that people come out, uh, schools are, t first they wouldn't say, uh, you know, get a psychological assessment. Yeah. Now the mm. schools are t uh, advising parents to get an educational assessment done before oh they bring God. their child. Wow. Yes. And, uh, it, and it's so beautiful that finally, you know, parents mm. would actually get to know too as well. But there has always been a problem related to when parents have been in denial too. True. I think That's it nice is uh, exactly uh, e equally important for parents to understand that God forbid if their child has a learning difficulty, uh, you know, they're first of all willing to accept it and then th we do have professions who can help them, you know, such, such as worthy professionals just as you. And how important do you think or what change do you think it will bring that, you know, having their assessment beforehand sending to school, do you think it will help a lot of child out there? I'm so glad you asked that, Shazad. What I'm seeing in the last several months basically is children who have been misdiagnosed, yeah, they and the families are suffering. Recently, I have been working with children. We, after assessment, we have diagnosed for autism, um, I, borderline IQ level and other. And the children have been going around in Islamabad, taking therapies for all other things, but the real issue was never assessed. Yeah. Okay. So when you don't know what you're working with, then you're just going to be working on the symptoms like, oh, you're getting a panic attack, right. or you can't, uh, you know, you can't focus. But why can't you focus? Why can't you, uh, uh, you know, make friends? Why can't you have this energy to get up in the morning? Yeah. So the assessments at every stage, every time a child flounders, every time the teacher, and I always respect the mother's instinct. True. The minute you feel that your child is different from others, take professional help. True. There is nothing wrong with it. True. Because the earlier you work, the better it is. True. So we have uh, this format that if you have a written document with you, which is the outcome of your assessment, your money is, you know, you have got your money's worth. You have proof of that. And then you can always get further True. work on it. Whether it's an IEP, whether it's with the school or whether it's a further evaluation. What we now need to do is also work on our fed, uh, federal board and the other board systems where True. these arrangements for inclusivity must be considered. True. And thank you very much for saying that. I think HSSC, you know, for, for all of those, FBISC, I think everybody needs to kind of work towards that as well. And this will actually ensure our younger generations being more educated, more aware and, you know, more smarter. But very quickly, you know, towards the end of this segment, Dr. Sahib, what I would want to ask you is that, you know, we've spoken about how parents are in denial. Okay, number one. Number two, I believe that away in Pakistan, we still have a long way to go when we speak about diagnosis. Now, I imagine that, you know, a kid who's dyslexic or autistic or have a Down syndrome, people certainly have no idea of what difference, uh, you know, all of these different illnesses might have or, you know, people who were born with that as well. How do you think, even now today, if there's a parent out there who mm -hmm. certainly thinks he or she, their son or daughter, might not be diagnosed the right way, what do you think they should do? They should go to a good psychologist. Yeah, that's a important. A reputable psychologist. Yep. They should talk about their own feelings and reservations. When they're in denial, it's usually the, uh, maybe they, it's the family system or somebody where they would feel embarrassed or ashamed to have a child who is not coping as but I always say one thing, as a parent, you are your child's shield. True. You are the protector. True. True. So you give that child the best uh, ability to live, uh, the skills to survive this world, and your job is done. True. And that's why I said the happy childhood, you know, we have this adaptive AIP, the adaptive information processing thing. When we deal with adults who are traumatized or with any other issue, if they have a happy childhood, their chances of recovering mental health is much higher. Wow. And, and, and let's talk about Dr. Saiba about the gift of dyslexia. Do you think that um, this narrative that we come across is because a lot of time it is said that some of the brilliant or the geniuses in the history were True. dyslexic people, right? 
Having said so, do you think this labeling is sometimes disabling? Because and do you think every dyslexic kid is a genius out Wonderful there? Point. How do you see? Not out really. There? I right. wouldn't say that uh, because we have a lot of children with average IQ. Right. Why do we need the label? You know, okay. here it's not understood as much as it's understood outside. True. There are legislations abroad. We okay. have the ideas legislation in the USA, okay. Canada, um, uh, Australia, England. We have legislation for that, even in Europe. Okay. When your child is diagnosed, mm -hmm. he gets those appropriate legal, educational, medical, all the sports by the government. True. Okay. Right? Right. And that's why, how would you just get help unless you're not diagnosed? True. So that is why that label or the diagnosis is important. Here, we have no such support. We don't have any legal uh, framework mm -hmm. for that, uh, you know, for bringing in the school psychologist, the medical, the si lawyer, the parents. There's a legal binding uh, in, in that thing. True. So the supports are appropriately defined. Okay. And that's why the diagnosis. I emphasize the diagnosis because then I tell the parents, then you will work in the appropriate direction. Exactly. Thank you so much, Dr. Saiba, for Thank being so with much. us. Lovely to be in conversation with you. And I think I've had the best segment ever, ladies and gentlemen, today, you know, being in conversation with Dr. Saiba. But uh, as of now, we're actually heading out towards a short break. And if you were having a tough time getting up today, ladies and gentlemen, we have an amazing, phenomenal singer joining us right after a short break. He's going to sing us a few songs and will give us that positive vibe and energy which <laughs> we want to kind of be celebratory just with our mood, all right? So we're heading out towards a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back and certainly before going on to the break, Shazad was talking about, about a celebratory culture and where we need to celebrate. So it's New Year, it's our New Year set and obviously with New Year Energy and obviously we're seeing that the new physical version of Shazad where he's wearing hats. So what is the story about wearing this cap? Because when I came to the studio, because I was looking from afar away, I said, who is this person sitting here? I couldn't recognize him. He actually thought you. that I was wearing a wig too as well. Because you know, it's so black, so it's somehow So what heard. happened was that today, uh, early in the morning when I woke up, so you know, my wife gave me this cap and she was like, just wear it for once. And I was like, okay, let me wear it and wore it. And she was like, you know, why don't you wear it on your show? Okay. You know, so just to fulfill her word, I'm actually <laughs> wearing it on the show too as well. So, you know, so just a kind gesture, I think from a husband to a wife that, Wonderful. okay, you know, I will fulfill whatever you say, inshallah, mm -hmm. if uh, that suits me or even if it does not. But now coming down to the <laughs> point, ladies and gentlemen, a happy wife means a happy life as well. And when we speak about happy life, we, whenever you're happy, you feel like dancing, you feel like singing. True. But when we talk about the music scene over in Pakistan, in recent times, we have right. seen so many amazing people come forward at the forefront as well. Imagine Abdul Hanan, Hassan Rahim, uh, Manu, Talal Qureshi, Young Stunners, and the right. in, entire uh, music industry, ladies and gentlemen, is actually backing all of these amazing youngster people who are producing such amazing music. One is an example over here inside the studios with us, ladies and gentlemen. We're very lucky that we've been joined by Mr. Osama Hajmi. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you? Well, Islam, good morning too. I'm fine. And how's about you? Absolutely perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and uh, alongside him, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we've been joined by Mr. Faizan as well. Hello, Faizan. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? I'm good. Sir. Wonderful. So, you know, so you made two new compositions. Yeah. You know, first of all, tell us about that. You know, what can your fans expect from you in this year, in 2023? Uh, basically, at this time, uh, you know that last time I have done a patriotic song, and uh, after that I have done, you know, that uh, a Sufi song. Yeah. Okay. So this time, uh, my Swaji was telling me that uh, why not you are going to do a love song? I mean, there are two types of compositions. One is an upbeat composition like yeah. rocking, and the other is uh, having some semi-classical touch into that. Wow! And you are always more inclined towards semi-classical or classical. Uh, basically, our upbringing in the studio and in the uh, Rang School of Art is like that. We are basically, you know, uh, recalling ragas and peltas okay. and tabla and harmonies. So the basically, we are learning that. So we have to uh, explore that thing and exhibit that thing into our singing touch. So which means, means that, you know, whenever you're performing live, you do not make a mistake because people who've actually learned that way, the old school way, ladies and gentlemen, it's really hard for them 
to actually miss out uh, you know on their rag or sur i think that's that's what i would certainly want to call it over <coughs> here as well but sam bhai since our audiences are out there why don't you sing us a song first and then we'll have a lot more conversation yeah definitely i'm going to sing a song of uh, uh, sir uh, khan saab kehna galat galat to chupana sahi sir it's the quality type but i try <coughs> कहना गलत गलत कहना गलत गलत तो छुपाना सही सही 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 का सिद्ध कहा जो उसने का सिद्ध कहा जो उसने बताना सही सही का सिद्ध कहा जो उसने बताना सही सही ये सुबह हो सुबह हो चेहरे की रंगत उड़ी उड़ी ये सुबह हो सुबह हो चेहरे की रंगत उड़ी उड़ी कल रात तुम कहाँ थे कल रात तुम कहाँ थे बताना सही सही कल रात तुम ते बताना सही सही कहना गलत गलत तो छुपाना सही सही का सिद्ध कहा जो उसने बताना सही सही wonderful song and says that we have seen uh, like we were talking about the entertainment industry and we seen that how it's drying up and we need to do more right talking about the music industry you also associated with that alhamdulillah and you've also done a song recently yeah. uh, so uh, osama we would ask you about uh, how um, do you think that it's drying up the music how is the current state of the music industry i think it's getting country? better <coughs> uh, uh, social media has helped us right in that sense because a lot of singers can post their content on the social media which was not available to earlier singers well uh, this matter has been to our discussion every every night or every day because we are, when we are get, uh, getting together right. so we are discussing this thing uh, one thing i would like to negate here because you know that uh, the singers who are coming uh, up front uh, in the market right they have not learned mostly i have seen that 70% of the singers have not learned the ragas the palta the tabla harmony basically we have to learn we have to do riyaz for many years right True. before coming on to the big screen okay. right so what we are going to exhibit in ourselves that when we are singing live especially so the new comers the new younger you know that they they must have to contain that potential hmm. but know that as compared to them we are going uh, going to do riyaz every day every night and i'm in the music industry since last 5 years okay. so when we are going going to uh, you know that uh, do kawali live with a proper team or solo cons concert so we have, we have that confidence and you know that uh, uh, we can uh, we can have a good gri grip on the sargam especially True. i mean i'm not <coughs> going to disagree over here i'm going to agree to you but partially because you know imagine that you know when when we speak about technology i think we really need to take advantage of technology and most of the singers are doing that so earlier True. you know if a band is going to come up on stage to perform so imagine that they are going to be a, a band of 10 people uh you know somebody on the rhythm guitar somebody on the lead guitar somebody on the drums percussions you know all of that and would consist of a band now there's this one singer he comes up with the laptop plugs it in yeah. plays the song and starts singing right. i think i mean the life of an artist has become easier with the advent of technology yeah. but having said that I, people <coughs> who have survived for a longer period of time in the industry are the only people who then after that after they become a hit have started to learn whether you know what real music is what sur is what uh, you know how the what what you mentioned uh, sargam, sargam. yeah sargam and then obviously they did riyaz. riyaz as well right and one is an example of uh, um, uh, 
uh, this uh, very phenomenal singer. She happens to be a dear friend of mine, Kuratulan Baloch. <laughs> you know, Kuratulan Baloch, you know, she, she actually became a massive hit, you know, right from the first uh, track which was being released. And then after that, she hired a teacher to teach her well how to sing as well. And I think that was the most beautiful thing. And now when she sings, ladies and gentlemen, the, the world dances. I think that's beautiful as well. But since we were talking about your two more compositions which are on way inshallah in this year as well so one you said was a romantic one yeah because every time you come over here i see that you do have this romanticism and you like romanticism yeah. as well right. what about the other one because you said that you know it's going to be a little party track yeah for the party track we have uh, chosen some western beats some high beats so it's a composition and a combination of rock pop and jazz you know wow rock so pop and jazz yeah, yeah. So wow. we are using, you know, that uh, a bit of the drum, like master drum and the keyboards, like, so we are uh, basically using mostly electronic instruments into that. Yeah. Okay. So here, but uh, there might be a difference over here that the other composition we are using sitar, harmonium yeah. and tabla, you know, and some quality type, you know, that. So uh, that, that will be a combination of two genres, like a uh, solo singing and the quality team ba ba I background. I think it's wonderful. And, you know, having said that, you know, this just actually right. came to my mind. And that is that why do you think that now pianos and, you know, all of those <coughs> DJ beat mixes we get these days, you know, are actually considered the newer instruments rather than sitar and harmonium, you know, and tabla, you know, are actually taken as an obsolete musical instrument. Why do you think that the singers of today's time were unable to incorporate all of these instruments mm -hmm. into a modern, newer music or sound type? Sir, so basically there is a lack of uh, good music teacher into the market. Okay. Right? So first of all, you have to uh, find a good mentor who is having a good background from some gharana, you know, like Sham Churasi, like Senia Gharana from which I am learning from my mm -hmm. And you know that it's an instant in, uh, inspiration. Right. And that type of upbringing is helping the singers to become more famous than the others who are using just tuners into the studio mm. and raising their voice, lowering their voice, music, uh, using the instruments and just right. to cover the flaws into their singing, yeah. basically. True. So uh, this is the thing that I would like to, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, inform or, you know, that uh, tell the other singers that they should have to learn first, you know, and use the, the old instrument like sitar, you know. True. Sitar is from, from India and it's having a uh, historical background, you know. Right. So even, you know, that now, now uh, in these days, uh, the trend of Kavali is very good, you know, that True. Uh, everybody, True. you know, uh, even uh, in some events like marriage or any ceremony, Sufi they're, they're night, going yeah. to have uh, Sufi night. Yeah. So, so in these Sufi nights, they're using, the singers are using sitar, tabla and harmonium. So people, uh, you know, like to listen that. No, but that's exactly what I'm saying now because Kavali is an older form of, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, if we are to kind of True. talk about music, Kalam. but you know, right. if, we, if we talk about Abdul Hanan, if we talk about young stunners, all of these people, I think they can incorporate that. But having said that, it's a longer debate. <coughs> I would want to narrow it down too as well. Now, imagine that if we are to speak about all of these instruments being used, you as a singer, have you taken responsibility, number one. Number two, where you spoke about teachers, I think, uh, in Pakistan for people who are technically correct, Sajad Ali Sahib, Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rahat Fateh Ali Khan Sahib, uh, Shafqat Amanat Ali Sahib, uh, and then uh, uh, Ustad Hamid Ali Khan Sahib. I think all of these amazing people out there, they, do you think that they can be the teachers of the people? Because they certainly do not have that much time to teach other people. Uh, so first of all, when you have to go to a teacher, so you have to, you know, that, uh, go through an examination. Sometimes, you know, that uh, even for a year or six months, you have to sit on the backstage, you know. You cannot come on the front. True. Even when I have joined, so I have struggled for two years. Okay. Then in the third year, my Ustaji gave me a chance to sit with him in the, in the Kavali. Now I'm uh, with the leading vo vocalist. Bah, sure. So you know that that should be the temperament and the patience among the youngsters that when they are going to learn from a teacher, you know, first of all, find a good te yeah. teacher. Shadow him. Yeah. So then they are going to join. They have to be patient. You know, you know sure. the thing is that people want to have shortcut to get famous in the nights. <laughs> it's not like that. It is obviously not like that. So very quickly, you know, what right. we're going to do is we're going to wrap up the show. And then right. towards the end, we are going to request you to sing us a beautiful song and we'll lead out towards that as well. So, Hajar, do you want to say something? Okay, so just wanted to add to this debate about how technology is helping young people out there. And I do feel that a lot of times uh, singers just have that technologically assisted, that music thing in which their voice is not that apt, but because of the technology, their voice gets really better out there. And I do feel in all of this process, sometimes art suffer like uh, our guest very... Uh, aptly mention about how people are not re rehearsing the riyas and whatever the composition out there. And this is where I think uh, people uh, who actually are the FPC Andos, music FPC Andos, they can help out there like Shazad mentioned, Raz Fateh Ali Sahib. He can actually mentor a lot of people out there, make sure that that art stays alive.
Exactly. So, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good morning. Please take it away. Zalim nazaron se tum na mujko dekho mar jaunga. Zalim nazaron se tum na mujko dekho mar jaunga. Oh, jaane jaana mar jaunga. Zalim nazaron se tum na mujko dekho mar jaunga. Oh, jaane jaana mar jaunga. Oh, jaane jaana mar jaunga. Oh, to na bhi aankhe sharabi. चांद सा चेहरा मुखड़ा गुलाबी हो तू ना भी आखे शराबी चांद सा चेहरा मुखड़ा गुलाबी और उस पे तेरा और उस पे तेरा और उस पे तेरा मुस्कुराना मर जाऊंगा हो जाने जाना मर जाऊंगा जालिम नजरों से तुम ना मुझको देखो मर जाऊंगा हो जाने जाना मर जाऊंगा हो जाने जाना मर जाऊंगा Ah, thank you so much for being with us and thank for everybody so who's out there, ladies and gentlemen. Look after yourselves. Have a great day. It's time for us to say goodbye and good morning. Bye.